Welcome to another edition of City Beat. For the Herald and Review, I'm Kenneth Lowe. We're here at the Decatur Area Technical Academy where candidates in the 101st Illinois House District have just concluded their debate. Let's see how State Representative Bob Flyter of Mount Zion and his Decatur Republican challenger, Adam Brown, fared against one another. Well, I um, have stated on numerous occasions that I am not in favor of an income tax increase and, and in fact, have voted against an income tax increase. And, uh, I've had uh, protests outside my office by people who think we should have had an income tax increase, uh, but I feel like now is not the time during uh, the uh, downturn in the economy. One of the last things we want to do is chase jobs out of our area, and I'm concerned that an income tax increase could do that. I would not support a tax increase. At this point in time, Decatur has a 12.4% unemployment. That's actually the third highest in the entire state of Illinois. So pushing another burden, another tax burden in this case, uh, on the people of Illinois would be extremely uh, hurtful as far as I'm concerned. The challenge, of course, we face is trying to make ends meet with the dollars that are available. And uh, I believe that we need to take a new approach at uh, governing and, and passing uh, a budget, and that is a performance-based budget, whereby we look at the revenues that are available to the state of Illinois and uh, say, uh, just like families must do and just like businesses, uh, we must live within those means. Well, I think we have to cut spending at a number of levels. If you take a hard look at our welfare situation, uh, welfare handouts have actually doubled over the past 10 years, from $7 billion to nearly $15 billion a year. I think there's a lot of fraud, a lot of waste in that system that needs to be accounted for. It's uh, clear to me that uh, these are difficult times, and whether you're an inst uh, educational institution or the state of Illinois, uh, what's needed is that everybody needs to look at tightening their belt. Well, first and foremost, as far as education is concerned, we have to keep good educators here in Illinois. And the trend in the state of Illinois for the past eight years has been to raid the pensions to pay for other obligations. I think we need to get that money back into the pension systems, a total of $80 billion in unfunded pensions this year. You know, one of the things I think is uh, important to recognize is that you need to fight, you need to fight for your district, you need to fight for what's right. Twice uh, in the last couple of years, I passed legislation out of the House as the chief sponsor for the state to pay its bills on time, for the administration to come up with a plan to pay its bills, to ensure that we're doing what families must do. Twice it was squashed by the Chicago leaders. Uh, when I opposed Governor Rob Lagojevich and his health care expansion and gross receipts tax, he came after me. He tried to find somebody to run against me. But I think that those are the right things to do for our people. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Republican or Democrat. You need to represent your people in your district, and, and that's what I've been able to do. Well, just as in the investment world, I believe uh, I, a diverse uh, investment is the best investment. And uh, here for the state of Illinois, I think we need some uh, serious experience uh, in the state house. But I believe we need some fresh ideas as well. We need somebody that's going to go out there. Uh, and push their opinions regardless of uh, what other lobbyists might think, but are willing to work on the behalf of the people instead. After the panelists scripted questions, audience members were also given a chance to conduct a town hall style questioning format. You've said multiple times that you want to put money back into education and pension, but you've also stated multiple times that we have a $13 billion deficit that you want to decrease. So what do you plan on cutting to not only put money back into the education and pension, but reduce the deficits. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of waste in the welfare system. Uh, we need photo identification for link cards. We need drug, drug testing for welfare recipients. There's a lot of fraud and waste in the system. And as I mentioned again earlier, uh, illegal immigration, our payouts across the state, $4.9 billion last year. These measures need to be drawn back. We need to take a look at uh, the budget line item by line item, find these wasteful spending procedures, and uh, correct them. You've said that increasing the state income tax would cut, re reduce our jobs or hurt jobs. I would assert that probably the opposite would also be true. Uh, would either of you here tonight support eliminating the state income tax as a way to bring entrepreneurs into Illinois? Well, that's a uh, interesting question. Uh, I guess the question I would ask you is uh, how the state would uh, fund programs like education without an income tax. Bringing new businesses and opportunities in here will bring increased revenue. It's kind of called supply side economics. And I don't care if we would increase the sales tax, but we could do it other ways, but the 
individual income tax specifically targets the people who have the money to invest in the state to bring employment. If we could provide the vital funding for vital services such as education and uh, nursing care and others without an income tax, I'd support it. Well, no income tax is, uh, is absolutely feasible because it's being done in Florida right now. Uh, I think it would be a great idea. Of course, we have to uh, find the money to fund other obligations as well. So we're going to have to go through the budget and find uh, where that waste is at. The Tech Academy's debate series continues as State Senator Kyle McCarter faces Tim Dudley, his Democratic challenger, next week, September 14th at 5 p.m. here at the Decatur Area Technical Academy. We'll be there as well. So that's what's happening in the city this week. For the Herald and Review, I'm Kenneth Lowe. Take care.